All right, let's take a look at how GNU Parallel runs. So it's very common for um, people who start uh, writing software when they have lots of computers. Um, they start writing their own schedulers, which is, is great, and often they work really well. Usually it takes a long time. It usually takes a couple of months to get something like that really um, working well and debugged. And so often I'm one of those people, it's sort of surprising or disheartening or maybe it's a happy thing to find out that GNU Parallel exists, which has been around for decades and does exactly all the scheduling that you might have wanted to write yourself. Uh, it's really flexible, really powerful, really intuitive. Um, and so I think for those of you who have written your own scripts that try to send jobs out to compute nodes, um, you'll find GNU Parallel really interesting. So let's grab a compute node so that we can start looking at how GNU Parallel works before we start writing an actual PBS script. All right, so q sub dash i dash q debug. I'm going to grab a debug compute node to work on. Let's cd into the workshop directory. Let's clean up a little bit. I'm going to delete these um, these output files. All right. So GNU Parallel. GNU Parallel is installed on the system by default. You don't need to load a module to use it under most circumstances. There are times um, as things get more complicated and GNU Parallel needs to know about your environment, particular modules you might have loaded, for example, where we will need to load a parallel module to handle that. But we have lots of those modules. Here's a list of those modules. There are several different versions we can use. Right. But for now we're just going to use the one that's built in. So GNU Parallel is designed to um, allow you to, to do parameter sweeps, pass in lots of different parameters to uh, multiple instances of, of programs running on different CPUs, or to read in files, etc. So let's see how it does that. So I'm going to type the command to parallel. Now, of course, this will all be in a PBS script eventually, but we're just exploring here interactively on a compute node. And I'm just going to call echo. So echo is a Linux command that just prints whatever comes next. So I'm going to run echo in parallel. And the syntax is going to be something like this. So I'm just typing in ABC here as an example. What's going to happen is parallel is going to take this A, this B, the C, run one instance of echo on a compute node on A, on a compute core, sorry, on A, one instance um, of echo on a compute core with B, and then the last instance with C. So it's going to take as many instances as it has input parameters and spread those across CPUs as best it can. All right. Now all Echo does is print its argument. So on three different cores, we printed A, B, and C. And of course, we can do this indefinitely. This is very, very, very simple. It's a little bit silly to use this on, um, on a compute node, but just to give you an idea, idea of how Parallel runs. This Echo program could be replaced with your own program that takes five hours to run, in which case it would it would take these six arguments, run it on six different cores, and instead of taking 30 hours to run, it would just take um, those six hours to run, the five hours to run. All right. But we can quickly make it more complex. So that was just one argument going into Echo. I can also give it a second set of arguments. And it'll do all combinations for me. So let's say that you were exploring a two-parameter space where your program two, takes two different arguments. They could be anything. They could be um, 
a number of steps to run, like in our, in our uh, Calculate Pi program, along with um, an image that's input for some reason. So it'll then look at all, uh, all combinations of the first parameter along with the second parameter, and we can keep on doing that. So you can see how with a fairly simple command line, we can spawn a very large number of jobs with all combinations of um, parameters. One very useful thing we can do is we can automatically find all the files that have a certain extension and pass those into parallel. It'll automatically spawn all the instances of your program across whatever cores there's access to um, and, and, and run one instance on each of the files that are found. So let's, um, let's test that. I'm just going to create some files here, some empty files. Uh, touch is a command that creates an empty file. I'm going to say touch test one dot text two three four. So imagine you have half a million files that you want to process. In this case, we only have four. But if these files were named anything dot text, and that could be any extension, we can pass it into parallel. And we do it like this. There is a program uh, built into Linux called find. So I'm going to tell find to search starting in the current directory for uh, files that match a certain name. And I'm going to search for all the files that end in .txt. And it returns a list of all those files. And I could have these in subdirectories. It would search all the subdirectories and find every instance of .txt. Now what's neat is that I can do that and pipe, that's what this vertical bar is, pipe. I'm going to take the output of find and I'm going to pass that into parallel. And in this case, I'm just going to echo um, whatever was passed in. So it's going to actually going to print the paths to these files. And Parallel has this built-in syntax. These two curly braces mean uh, take whatever was passed in. So there are four lines of things that are passed in here, the four paths to files it found. Take each one of those and run whatever the program is on that file. Now all Echo does is print again what it was, was passed in. But if your program reads in a file as an argument, you could do this and it would automatically discover all of your data files, put an instance of your program on every compute node that you had requested, and you come back in a day or two and it's finished processing all those files for you, depending on how long it takes to process each file. All right. So what does that look like in concrete terms with our Calculate Pi program, for example? Well, let's say I want to do another parameter sweep. Um, then I could just say parallel, so you have to say Python parallel, okay. Calc pi. And now it would normally take um, an argument here. I can just do our three colons and say, I want you to look at a thousand. 2,000, 10,000, 20,000, and a million. All right. We have eight cores on this node. So um, I could do a couple more experiments. I could say, look at 2 million and 5 million. All right. And it'll run an instance of calc pi with each of these parameters on each core of the compute node. Oh, that's seven, I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So we can do one more. 
Now I can do many more than eight. Um, it will just queue up on those compute nodes and keep on running until it's finished. Let's start with the same number of jobs as there are cores on this node. Nope. Let me just fix that silly typo. All right. And here it goes. It's running our program on each of these cores and printing the output. So this was our 1000 case through our 10 million case. And you can see as our number of steps got larger, the time taken got larger, but the accuracy of our estimate got better. Okay. And as I said, I could do that for uh, more than eight cores, even though we only have eight cores on this node. So let's take it 12 million, do it 12 million and 15 million. So we're starting to get a little inconvenient to write this very long um, set of parameters. So what we can do is create an input file that has those parameters in it. All right. And instead of passing everything on the command line, we're just going to list them here. So 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 1,000, and so on. All right, so you can see I'm listing all kinds of parameters here in this file. Um, really, I'm sort of defining this, this experimental space that I'm going to explore automatically on different compute nodes. All right, as our params.txt. And now I can replace um, all these command line arguments. Now I add one more colon here. And I'm going to say params.txt. Oops. Don't need a space there. And now it is scheduling and running um, all those separate jobs, all those separate uh, instances of the program on the different cores of this compute node. Now, one thing to be careful about is I keep using the word jobs with um, respect to GNU Parallel. And it is sort of doing that. It's taking your program and all the combinations of parameters that you gave it, and it's deciding where, on what core and what CPU to run them most efficiently. But we also have the idea of a job for a PBS uh, job. So the PBS job is a request for resources, a request for some number of nodes and some, some number of CPUs that you can use. And then GNU Parallel is scheduling a bunch of tasks on whatever nodes and CPUs you were allocated. Now, so far, everything we've been doing has been on one node and eight cores. We have to add one more piece of information to run this across multiple compute nodes. GNU Parallel has to know the names of the compute nodes that we are using. And the way it does that is by accessing a special PBS variable that um, the other programs also use when they're trying to schedule across multiple nodes, and that is a PBS node file. So PBS node file is a variable that has the names of all of the nodes you are allocated. In this case, we're only allocated one node. So let's see if we can get a couple of nodes here. So I can demonstrate how this works. Looks like there are two debug nodes right now, so I'm going to ask for two of these. So I'll set the limit to be nodes equals two, and I want all the cores in each node. So recall that when you run a job like this, you are, your interactive shell is only on the first node that you were allocated. And the scripts you run, your PBS scripts, will only run on the first node you were allocated. So this is exactly where something like um, GNU Parallel will help you, because then you can run on all the compute nodes you were, you were allocated automatically. All right, but to see what compute nodes we were allocated, I'm going to type cat 
to visualize the contents of this variable. Um, and then it's pbs node file. And I get one row per core that I asked for. So you see that I asked for eight cores per node, and I asked for two nodes. So there should be 16 entries in this variable. There are eight for the first compute node, Wheeler 302, and eight for the second compute node, Wheeler 301. All right, so now we have access to 16 cores on two different compute nodes. So if I go back and I run my params here, oops, of course I have to see the interwork shop directory. This is currently running these jobs only on the eight cores of Wheeler 302. It's not accessing Wheeler 301 yet. To do that, we need to tell it about that um, special variable, that PBS node file. And how we do that is we say SSH login file and then pass in this PBS node file variable. Now Parallel will know what compute nodes we were allocated by the scheduler and it'll send our jobs, it'll send our tasks to all of those compute nodes we were allocated. In this case, we're allocated two nodes. It could be 40 nodes, and they would do the same thing. All right. This time it ran these 16 jobs, or how many jobs there are here. It ran them using up to 16 cores across two nodes. Now notice that so far, these time values are not changing depending on how many cores we have, because each one is running ind independently on a different core. Uh, to get our program to run faster for a single problem, we're going to have to use communication and introduce this, this idea of coupled parallelism that I talked about earlier. Uh, we're going to have to have a single computation, a single calculation of pi um, spread across lots of cores in order to see these numbers go down for any particular number of step sizes. Um, it has nice features, for example, um, you can store a file. So if I run this again and add a job log command, um, I'll just call it job log job.log. It'll write out the progress of, um, of all the instances of the program that ran. Now the nice thing about this is that let's say you wanted to run thousands of these programs and it took a while to run and you're limited to 48 hours of wall time. Well with GNU Parallel and the job log, the next time you run GNU Parallel it'll read that job log and it'll see how many instances of your program completed successfully. And if they haven't completed, then it'll schedule them next. So it'll skip over all the ones it's already finished the next time you run GNU Parallel. Now what that means in practice is that you can run your, your QSub, you can submit your job repeatedly. Every time you run out of your 48 hours, you can resubmit your job. It'll pick up where it left off and keep on processing the next, the next set of parameters or input files that you haven't um, processed yet. And that effectively means that you have infinite time um, on the CARSI systems. You don't have to worry about your uh, exceeding your 48 hours because it keeps track of the progress as it goes. All right, um, I think that's maybe enough. Let's take a look at the, uh, the job log really quick though, I guess. So the job log keeps track of what node it was running on, um, what exactly the command was that was generated. So here are the commands with the different parameters, uh, how long they took, and this signal tells you if they exited successfully or not. If it's a zero, 
then everything went according to plan. If it's non-zero, then something went wrong. And you can actually specify to um, GNU Parallel that it rerun jobs that failed. All right, so now we now understand how this works interactively. Let's write a, um, a script to do this automatically. All right. So we're going to modify our script. Uh, it's no longer going to be a job array. We're going to use GNU Parallel instead. And all we're going to do is repeat the command that we um, developed interactively. So I'm going to say parallel quotes around commands that have spaces in them, like this, Python, help pi, help pi, four colons, testify parameter, input file, params.txt. And I'm going to tell it to keep track um, of the progress in the job log. And since we're using uh, not 50, but in this case, it's going to be two nodes, I'm going to have to specify that SSH login file. Let's go ahead and change his name because we're no longer doing this in serial. This is now parallel. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and this is true um, of a lot of tools for running things in parallel, is that we have to be very clear about where our program is. So if I ran it like this, it would tell me it couldn't find calcpy.py. So I'm going to use this PBSO worker variable that shows up all over the place. To tell Parallel exactly where to find this calcpy.py. So we have 16 cores we've allocated on two nodes, and our job is running. Here is our output, and let's see what it contains. Here's the output that we saw earlier, but we ran it through a script. I want to quickly show you an example of a real-life project here at Carsey that uses GNU Parallel. So here is a PBS script that we wrote for one of our users. Um, in this case, they need to uh, make use of modules, Garovi modules. Um, and so they have to add this line, source which parallel dot bash, and they have to actually load the parallel module. But otherwise, it's the same as what we've been doing so far. It's a long, complex looking command, but there's nothing here, or not much here, that you haven't seen before. So let's dig into what's going on. All right, so the first part you may already recognize. All it's doing is searching for all of the graph files, all the dot graph files in this user's data directory. Those files are being sent to parallel. In this case, it's called env parallel because there are modules being used. The dash dash jobs argument specifies how many tasks to run concurrently on a particular node. If you don't specify this, it'll use all the available cores. In this case, we're specifying to use eight cores, though. Then we run here 
we run Python PBS over Richter IP solve IP.py. So this uh, user had written a Python program for doing um, a graph uh, coloring tasks task. Um, the first argument, so curly braces one, is the graph file that's being passed into this program. The second argument being passed in is this epsilon value. So this is the parameter that they were curious to explore, and it's a file. So there are many values of epsilon that this user wanted to explore to see how they would interact with a particular uh, method of coloring the graph and on different input graph files. So all of this complexity really is just automatically getting all the combinations of parameters, methods, and files that this user wanted to explore and having it automatically schedule all those tasks across a large number of cores. Um, this line of code would run hundreds, if not thousands, of different, uh, different instances of this Solve IP program across hundreds of cores and take a couple of days to finish. GNU Parallel is a very sophisticated, uh, flexible, uh, and pretty complete solution for scheduling um, tasks across many nodes. And as such, it's probably much too complicated for me to go into any further here. You've seen how to run embarrassingly parallel tasks. So you have an instance of uh, each program running independently on however many cores you have access to. And as I've said a few times, that's typically used for parameter sweeps. Maybe you have um, a parameter that you're not sure what the optimal value is. You can try many instances on many cores all at once to find that optimal. Uh, I've shown you examples where you can pass in um, multiple parameters and it'll automatically figure out all combinations of that parameter space to explore. I've shown you how to put the parameters into a file uh, so it's less cumbersome than writing them all in the command line and how to put that into a script. And I've also shown you how to use the find tool to um, get all the uh, input files of a particular extension and automatically pass those in to Parallel. Alright, I'm going to end uh, GNU Parallel there, but feel free to send um, emails to help at cars.unm.edu and we'd be happy to talk about uh, setting up um, failure resumption and how to use the job log to resume jobs. Alright, I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.